Hallelujah and praise God. I believe that God has kept you well and safe. Um, this is part two of the saving power in remembrance. Now, let me underscore the following. That it's when God remembers that this saving power takes place. And uh, God's children do not perish. Why? Because this remembrance carries in heat God's saving power. And when God remembers his children, when God remembers a nation, when God remembers a people, what happens is that he gives them a chance to repent. And therefore, remember what I said in my other series, that in remembrance, the door of forgiveness opens. So when the children of God are given a chance to repent, then they cannot perish. Don't forget the story of Nineveh. God remembered them. Their sin was full. God remembered them. It was time for their destruction. But it was, they were given a chance to repent. Jonah goes to preach that they should repent. They repented. God forgave them. That's why Jonah was not happy with the doings of God. Now watch this. It's remembrance where God's children receive this power that prevents them from perishing. Now, without much um, ado, God had to remember Joseph in prison because of the famine that was ahead and Jacob and his household to be saved from hunger. Remember, Pharaoh had a dream and the interpretation of the dream by Joseph was there are going to be seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. Now, let me take you back to the book of Genesis chapter 15, verse 12 down to 14, where God appears to Abraham and begins to give him his blueprint, his divine plan, that your seed shall be slaves in a nation for 400 years. And after that, I'll take them out. They will be slaves. I'll punish that nation. So who is going to take them to Egypt? God begins that thing with Joseph. Joseph is born and while he is young, he begins to have dreams, strange dreams, that he will become a ruler. Oh, and his, his brothers are bound before him. His father, parents are bound before him. And it didn't make sense. One day, because of his being a dreamer, the, the brothers hated him. They sell him to Egypt. They sell him off. And he lands as a slave in the house of Potiphar. And you know, he's made a, a manager of the house of Potiphar and he's doing very well. And I believe he felt that what I began, what I was seeing, God is doing it. But things were not adding up because where are, the, where are his parents? Where are the brothers? So one time the wife of Potiphar wants to sleep with him and uh, Joseph is, does not allow it to happen. So he's put in prison on allegations of attempted rape. What's this? And I'm sure while in the prison, Joseph is like, what about what you told me, God? What about your plan? What about your agenda? What about the dreams? What happened? And while he's there, two guys that worked in the palace of Pharaoh, they join him. They are put in prison in, in, in whatever they had done against Pharaoh. And those guys have a dream and, and Joseph interprets that dream and it comes exactly. One dies, the other one lands back to his job. Watch this. After two full years, Joseph has a dream in Genesis 41. Oh sorry, Pharaoh has a dream about what is about to happen, the events of what is to take place in Egypt. And he didn't have anyone to interpret the dreams. The wise men in Egypt could not. The astrologers could not. And the guy whom Joseph interpreted the dream and, and he was told by Joseph, please remember me before Pharaoh. He had forgotten. After two years, the guy remembers when Pharaoh had a dream. And he said, I remember my fault. There was a guy in prison. When you put us there, he interpreted for us the dreams we had. And I, took, I got back my job. My friend, you killed him. You executed him. So Pharaoh sends for Joseph. And Joseph is brought from prison. So God remembers Joseph and takes him out of prison to preserve life. Oh, Genesis 41. Uh -huh. 
Yes. Let me go to 45. Genesis 45. The Bible says, 45 verse 5, Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, because the brothers came. You remember? The brothers came to look for food. Because when Joseph got um, in power, yes, there were seven years of abundance that began. Then after that, seven years of famine. Now in these seven years of famine, after two years of famine, or drought in the whole of the world, Jacob sends his sons to go to Egypt to buy food. And the brothers come and they encounter their brother. He's the prime minister. You know the story, to cut the story short. And Jack, uh, Joseph tells them, Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that he sold me here. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Watch that. The saving power in remembrance. God remembers Joseph. Why? to save Jacob and his children to save the nation of Israel the saving power in remembrance the reason why God brings Joseph all this way Joseph has to go all this path lands himself in Egypt and is given the seat of power is to preserve life so God remembers Joseph out of prison the saving power was made manifest. Verse 7, And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Oh, I love that. I love that. So, God remembers Joseph. And you know what? Exactly as God had said it to, to the Patrick Abraham, that your seed shall be slaves in a, for 400 years. It happened. So remembrance are to take place so that Joseph could do what God had purposed to do. For God's children to be saved and for them not to perish. If Jacob, if Israel never went down to Egypt to be preserved there, then they would have died because of famine. They would have died in the land of Canaan and the plan of God, yes, the plan of God would be thwarted. But you know what? What God said can never be stopped, can never be thwarted. Listen to me carefully. Because God has remembered you. Your family cannot perish. God has remembered you. That infirmity cannot kill you. That disease will not take you to the grave because God has remembered you. His saving power is taking place in your business, in your marriage. The saving power of God is taking over in your finances. I release the saving power of God in your children. I release the saving power of God in your health. I release the saving power of God in the work of your hands. I release the saving power of God even upon this nation. Kenya cannot perish because God has remembered Kenya. The saving power is at work. Listen, if you are not born again, allow the saving power of God if you backslid, if you're not sure, allow the saving power of God to take center stage in your life. You will not regret. You will not regret. Say after me. Say, Jesus, I accept you today. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Let your saving power take place in me and write my name in the book of life amen amen if you mean that prayer don't stay at home look for a bible believing church around where you are please don't stay at home belong to a local assembly somewhere my name is Titi Eagles coming to your life from Nairobi Kenya and I'm the lead pastor Eagles Dominion House International let me invite you to our church this coming Sunday you must welcome at 10 a.m. The, the service begins at 10 a.m. At Rainbow Hotel, that floor. That is opposite Sienna Market and along Mfangano Street. God bless you. God bless you.